Alright everyone. Get ready to K the logo. In 3, 2, 1, and... Oh, what a good yet looking like. Can you all just mind your own business? Oh, right. You want us to explain our daily life after some idiot with our daughters slaughtered us to death in his so-called execution. Now let's get started. All because of that stupid Satan who talks to and trapped us in here. Crate the devil, who revived us twice was banished without his staff powers. Meaning we can't be revived so we can get out of here. Oh, and my favorite part about this is when me and my wife Alice would beat up a Justin decoy we made up to help release our own anger out on our former daughter. Justin. But since we are trapped here forever, and all our ally police officers friends put in prisons, there is almost no hopes of ever escaping or being revived. Now today will mark the biggest milestone in my time in hell. I created a beacon that will signal our location. Hopefully, anyone from another universe to help get us out of here. I call this. Operation Punish just in an Bell and Kid Ted and Camilla's bottom. Alice. Are you ready? Sure, Sonny. Let's activate our beacon. And see who comes knocking. Take this, you imposter of mine. Ha <laughs> ha! You miss suckers. Oh really? Well, take this in advanced. Sunny. This is our chance to be free. You're right, Alice. Now to get out of this piece of shit I'm in my house. <laughs> so, care to explain your beacon signal all the way from hell? Well, we are right now trying to find our troublemaking daughter who escaped from us and is a really bad girl who causes her to cry out. Oh, I see. You are speaking my language. Care to tell me more about this troublemaking daughter of yours? Sure. We will be glad to tell you along the way. Well, shortly after Sunny and Alice's execution, Justine is currently enjoying her new and better life with her sister Annabelle. Free from their former disgraceful parents. Justine also got to meet new friends at her school. 
just watch. Do you know change in your pockets can change the world? <laughs> Don't worry. I drop things all the time. I'm Justine. Nice to meet you, Justine. I'm Adeline, by the way. Hello. My name is Bree. And the best part. Ted and Camilla worked with Child Protective Services. They worked with each other to legally adopt Justine and Annabelle Scudder and raise them as their own daughters and make them part of their new family. As for Justine's enemies, Ms. Trenchbull got sentenced an additional 25 years for additional charges from Justine's child abuse case. As for Mr. Butler, Butler was released from prison since there was no evidence of him child abusing Justine Scudder, but former principal Salamo is still in prison for allowing child abuse at her school by calling Justine's parents to give her a punishment day. Mr. Butler is still on a restraining order by Justine for his involvement in that case. As for Oscar. As you see, Oscar's parents changed their minds on disowning their son. So this is what happened. Oscar. We have decided on your punishment. You are now grounded forever. And for your punishment, we are sending your little ass to military school for everything bad you did to Justine and burning down your school. Oh no 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 no. Not military school. Please don't send me back there again. I hate it there. Well too bad, so sad. Also, you are getting the belt as an additional punishment for all your snitching and bullying troubles you did on Justine, including the time you used a hammer to break a hole in the wall while wearing a Justine outfit. No. Anything but the belt. Please, no. That hurts so bad. Too bad Oscar. Maybe if you haven't been causing drama to Justine in the first place, then you would never be punished for your actions. I will now go get my belt to teach you a lesson. Alright. I got my damn belt out. Let's teach this troublemaker a lesson. Now tell me. Did Justine accept your apology? Um, no she didn't. I already went to apologize to her and she keeps rejecting it. Well, no, this no, is all no, your fault no, for causing no, drama to no, Justine. No, no, You're done. No, so done. No, Big no, time. No. Ouch 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 ouch. That really hurt so freaking bad. Wow. I don't give a crap. Maybe if you haven't caused Justine drama in the past. This would have never happened. You are grounded for 10 months for everything. That's right, Oscar. Like your dad says, you are grounded for 10 months. And you are going to military school for your punishment. I agree with your mother. Now, go to your room right now and pack your bags for military school tomorrow. Wow. It's for Mr. Butler. This is what happened. Mr. Butler. I hope you learned your lesson. But for being a strict teacher to your former student, you are grounded. Again. Go to our bed and write this instant young man. That's right Mr. Butler. I am the superintendent here. I came to notify you that I received reports that you were being involved in the Justine Scudder child abuse case with Principal Salama when she called her previous parents to give her a punishment day and ground her super massive big time. But Superintendent Charles, I am very sorry. I didn't decide to have Justin's previous parents give her a punishment day. It was Principal Salama who called her parents to do that. And besides, I would never do any harm on Justin Scudder. And me and Principal Salama would never child abuse her at all. It was actually Ms. Trenchbell who was doing bad stuff to her and Annabelle. Especially after burning down her juvenile detention. That doesn't matter what happened. You agreed with Principal Salamo to have her parents give their daughter a punishment day and grant her disaster time, which proves you support and allow child abuse at your school along with Principal Salamo who is in prison for 45 years, which we do not allow at Lincoln School District. You know what? 
You are fucking fired from being a first grade teacher for Lincoln Elementary. What? I attribute this because Jocelyn was a bad student in my class. Well, it doesn't matter what she did. Put her in the timeout chair, maybe help Justin with dealing with her bullies, or even wash her mouth out with soap if she curses. But you know what? Banning her from recess indefinitely and recording her tantrum in the classroom is unacceptable here. Now, I never want to see you or your former principal anywhere near our school campus ever again, and I mean it. You and Solomon are a disgrace to our school. I agree with the superintendent. You were grounded for two months straight for what you did. Now, go upstairs to our room right now. All right, Sonny and Alice, I have the perfect plan to get your daughters back for revenge, but to do that, we need an approach. And what idea can we come up with our sleeves? Oh, Boris. I got the perfect idea for an approach. All right, Sonny, spit it out. What's the big plan? Well, we are going to get a van, disguise it as a cabby truck, and drive it to Ted and Camila's house. Tad's right, Sonny. Hey, Boris. We know where Ted and Camila live. And I believe that is where Justin and Dan the girl were before we were slaughtered to beat by the wretched Alejandro Mera. That sounds like a good plan. Everyone, I have a van somewhere which we can use for this approach. Let me go get the keys. While I go get my keys, I have some uniforms that I would like you to have which I made exclusively for you. <laughs> There we go. Now the van looks perfect for what I am going to do. Let's go get some kids. All right. The big plan is drive over to Justine's house, grab Justine and Danabelle, and bring their troublemaking asses back to their real parents, Sonny and Alice Scudder. See, that will be too easy. Now, let's go. Oh my goodness Ted. This looks amazing. So did you do this just for Justine's 8th birthday? Um, yes, Camila. Since this is our third month of having Justin and her sister Annabelle in our family, we have to make this party very special. I agree with you Ted. Today is Justine's 8th birthday and we are all going to make this the greatest birthday she has ever had. Yes. That is so sweet of you Ted and Leonardo. Justine is so going to be very excited when she sees this. Alright. Ted. I was hoping that you would help me set up the backyard and swimming pool for the visitors when they come over to celebrate Justine's birthday with us. Alright Leonardo. Hey Camila, can you go and wake up Justine and have our other kids be ready to celebrate her 8th birthday while I help my brother with the backyard? Alright, honey. I will wake them up and have them be ready for their 8th birthday. Justine, wake up. It's your birthday. Really, Mom? That's right, Justine. You are now eight years old now. Yeah, 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 It's my birthday, it's my birthday, it's my birthday. I hope this time I get a better birthday this year. In the meantime, I am going to call my friends Bree and Adeline to come over. Oh, yes. This is so exciting. Don't worry Sunny and Alice, we already have Justine and Annabelle's location and coordinates. We will help you find them. Justine is supposed to be living with you guys for all the trouble she has caused to Vyond City in the past. Alright then, Boris. I hope we see them. Oh we have a treat for them alright once we see them in our hideout. As for Karen, once you see those very bad daughters, I want you and Evil Yellow Horse to grab them and bring them to me. We are going to get our revenge on these. <laughs> 